Good morning, everyone. This is Vance Williams out of the United States, uh, out here near Seattle, home of the 12th man in the Seahawks. Uh, welcome to my live forex trading show. It's Thursday, yeah, Thursday, March 27, 2014. Uh, today I'll give you my read on the market using my unique approach where I only use logic to evaluate what I'm doing. Um, I put the topic today in the email of, you know, master price movement and uh, what would be the use of mastering price movement unless it gave you some kind of, kind of advantage in the market. Um, if you follow my shows, which I'm only doing a couple times a week now, but I also post printed analysis um, on the off days uh, that you can follow. But if you follow what I do, you'll see I'm, I'm not really um, using a thousand different things. It's, it's about ten different things and pretty much everything I'm doing comes down to something very simple. Uh, one, is there a high probability advantage for the buyers or the sellers? And two, if there is, is there a range big enough to enter and exit with good risk management? Um, you know, when you when you take on anything new and challenging, um, it always gets complicated uh, before it gets simple. But that's what it will eventually get back to. Um, is is do the buyers or sellers have a high probability advantage? And uh, is there enough room to enter and exit with good risk management? And uh, people ask all the time, you know, you know, can you tell me what you're showing people how to do? Um, yeah, um, it's just um, learning the elements that go into a high probability trade. I mean, it's like if you were to play Texas Hold'em and you didn't know what the cards meant. You didn't know that a pair of kings beat a pair of tens or, you know, a pair of tens beat a seven and a two. I mean, that's the first step is knowing how to how to uh, determine your probabilities of winning. That's obviously not how you win at poker. That's not the whole picture anyway. But um, you know, it's it's funny. I, I I continue to be on this run of tens of thousands of people over ten years, and no one's asked me, "Hey, what affects my probability of winning?" It tells you the dismal state of the forex trading culture that someone doesn't even know to ask that question. And so we focus on that. You know, there are you know, just like in poker, there are kings and queens. Just in forex trading, there are specific elements that affect your probability of winning. So that's the first step. The second step is you know, learning how to execute well. Um, life, ordinary life, does not prepare us to make these types of decisions. When we do something new, especially if we perceive that there's risk, we're going to experience fear. That's just the way the old part of your brain works. And so uh, we need a strategy for what uh, that will enable you to develop a, a way of making decisions so that you're not feeling that fear. And so that's where you you know your own personal setup with complete logic, you know, and then you practice executing a trading plan, a different method of making decisions that will enable you to trust yourself. And so that just takes practice. And that's really all there is to it. Um, you know, we could talk all day about indicators and everything, but that's why you win forex trading. Um, before I go into reading the market, I just want to uh, say what I always say is, you know, what I teach you here is for educational purposes only. Um, I don't think that anything that I tell you here is going to enable you to make money pushing buttons. Um, again, it's a complete skill. It would be like listening to a live seminar on doing brain surgery. It's possible someone could convince you that you could do it and open a live account and they can make money off your live account, but you're not going to perform brain surgery. Uh, you, ne you need to know uh, the parts and what your objectives are and you have to train yourself to be steady and all those types of things. So um, so please don't, j just because you know which way price is going to go, which I'll explain to you 90% of the time, um, that doesn't mean you're going to make money because you still have entry and exits and uh, you know risk management, all that stuff that you have to get right. Um, this morning we had uh, some data released uh, out of the UK about 5.30 and there it is. It, it moved the market about 80 pips. So we're looking at the pound 30 minute chart. Um, people ask why do you trade the 30 minute chart advance? Well I used to trade daily in daily charts. Um, that was how I started trading and um, in order to trade trends on the daily charts you'd actually have to have a long term daily trend to trade and since the crash of 2008, we don't have that because no one knows 
if the world's going to hell in a handbasket in six months or what. I mean, it's looking better, um, but still it only survives because the central banks keep infusing liquidity into it. It, it can't stand on its own still. Um, the, the marker that you'll be looking for to see that that's changed is uh, places like the United States will actually raise interest rates. That will signal um, the market having enough strength to basically stand on its own, which it can't do right now. So the point was is when when there are long-term trends, uh, I'll be you know I'll be popping a, a bottle of champagne and going fantastic because it's going to make what we do now even easier. Uh, but right now, no. Just pull up a monthly chart um, on the euro and the pound and just look. You'll just see it's in this little tiny range. Um, so, uh, so we had the retail sales, and this was a movement of about 85 pips. So, so logic is about what, or I should say, logic it should be based in things that are repetitive, repetitive human behavior. So, this is a let's drop down to a five-minute chart, and you'll see that price moved 83 pips in five minutes. Okay, is that usual or unusual? That's unusual, okay? And so you want to be careful to learn to recognize what's usual behavior uh, versus what's unusual behavior because the usual behavior is what gives you uh, your probabilities. Uh, usually, and you could say almost always, a pair of kings is better than a pair of tens, right? That's usually true, okay? That doesn't mean you're going to win with your pair of kings because somebody might bluff you right out of there. But... So we want usual. Now this is unusual. Another little tip I can give you is when money moves like this, and let's go back to the 30 minute, when money moves very fast and doesn't immediately reverse, say like in the next 90 minutes, this is probably repositioning of money. And while it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, and I'm really talking to our members in my training program right now, um, when that happens, you can actually say, okay, this is repositioned money, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a new wave that advances farther. And so uh, this chop, chop, chops. There's just little waves taking this up, and it just barely breaks the high. So what we're looking for right now is a wave that moves this higher. Um, 80 pips is a pretty big move, so this might be content to stall and, and correct a little bit this morning. So all around the pound U.S. dollar this morning is just sitting in an unusual circumstance, and unusual is not good for high probability trading. So we're just going to, unless this makes a nice move up here and breaks this high and moves a steady move with no pullback and gives us about 25, 30 pips of uh, range to enter and exit, we're not interested in this. But that's what we would be looking for. Um, Okay, so let's go to the euro chart. The euro has been actually flirting with this uh, this lower level we've had in place for a couple of days. Um, let's take a look and see what happened here yesterday. Now, there's a couple things. The, the trend was down. You can see that by the moving averages. These are the only indicators we use. Um, for those of you who've been taught that moving averages are lagging and, and uh, therefore you should not use them, um, you've been taught by someone who doesn't understand how we use them. Uh, this this moving averages give you the um, uh, kind of an overall picture of the money that's moving anywhere between one and five days, which direction it's going. And yes, by themselves, they would be very unreliable. But we only trade, we only use them if price is advancing the trend. And when you use, use them in that context, guess what? They're 100% accurate. Yes, the trend is going in that direction. And so there's a couple things here. We could be looking at as prices moving down here, you know, do we get a, a move big enough to enter and exit with good risk management before it hits this bottom? And secondly, when it comes into this bottom uh, and moves out, it, does it, does it, is the move big enough for us to enter and exit with good risk management? So that's what we're going to look at. I'm going to put a little horizontal line here kind of show us the area that we're looking at when we drop down to the five. And yeah, I know there's a little arrow over here we can use. Actually, it's, it's right here, but it should be over there. Um, okay, so let's drop to five minutes. So the first thing I want to look at is coming down through here, we would have had a kind of a, 
kind of an area of support right in here. Uh, and we don't really need to put this in position. Now, now I'm wishing I wouldn't put it here. <laughs> we get rid of it. Uh, but really just looking for this coming out of here. So there's a couple of things we'd be looking for. Does this advance more than 20 pips? Does it retrace to 38.2? Those would be the first things. Uh, advances only 16, so we're done. But if it did advance more than 20, we would look. We would be looking for a pullback to 38.2 or more. Uh, neither of those things happened. And so it comes into, uh, one of the things you could do is you could continue your FIB on down to this level and keep going until it does uh, retrace. So this this uh, this fib would start from here. And it never retraced 38.2, so it end up all the way down here. And then you see the pullback and the second push. Uh, so it is possible that you could have traded this. The only problem is is that when you're coming into a clear and obvious barrier like this, kind of all bets are off. Your risk is a little bit higher because there's going to be uh, buyers kind of park there, buy orders park there, that's going to change your risk. So the way that you could deal with that, if you like this and you felt this is a strong move, is, is you know, don't go in early, get as, as good a price as you can because you know you're going to get opposition near that level. So yes, you can trade it with the good logic of the movement, but uh, look for a better price. So there's a kind of an advanced tip and then of course it would have pushed down into this area again, which we would expect. Um, from here, I can tell you this, this Momentum starts here, and this is only about 13 pips, it looks like. So uh, 15, so not enough. And so not enough to get your interest. And you want to stay out of, you want buyer or seller movement to show you at least 20 pips of movement. Otherwise, you're, you're kind of caught in a range of noise. Okay, so what might we look for at this point? So th this is all played out. There's nothing here. Well... We look for price to move way up here and turn this trend around, or we would look for a break below here. So 137.49. So look for this to stretch out without a pullback, uh, and then that would leave you, if you knew what you're doing, that would leave you enough room to enter and exit with good risk management if the range of movement is big enough. I will take a quick look at the Australian dollar. Um, I don't tend to trade these. Uh, the the pound, the euro, the dollar, that's 70% of all the money in Forex trading. In other words, the liquidity. Um, and, and so the logic is, is you want to trade the elephant, not the raccoon hanging onto his tail. Uh, the Australian dollar is what, 3%? The Kiwi's 2%? So, you know, it's fine. You know, the, the, you know, the, the, the Kiwi and the Australian dollar can do whatever it wants. Uh, you know, when the U.S. markets are closed, but no matter how strong the sentiment about the Australian dollar, if the United, if London and the United States open up and they say, well, no, well, the dollar's going the other way, it doesn't matter what happened in Australia. Um, in addition, there's some correlations with uh, commodities uh, like gold and silver and, uh, and a direct correlation with China. And so what I'm saying is that if you're going to trade this seriously, you have to learn the behavior of uh, these currency pairs, the Australian dollar and the Kiwi. So um, if you were looking to trade these, you definitely would want to move above here with a range big enough to enter and exit. And then, you know, if we get something to the downside, we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's look at the Kiwi real quick. Oh, that's kind of interesting, actually. So I see some movement up here on a very strong trend. So let's uh, drop down to the five minute. The reason why I dropped to the five minute is not to trade a five minute chart. I can't see if this would chop, 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 chop. I can't see the behavior of the buyers and sellers. All I see is one long white candle. I need to drop to the five minute to see what that actual behavior was. And so, so I see here, so now if this retraced 50%, then I'd be starting my FIB somewhere else, but it doesn't. But I can only see that on a five minute chart. So this moves all the way up here without retracing. And then, of course, our traders know that you know if you're going to trade the Kiwi, you better you better get a really good price because it, it'll sometimes retrace 100% before the trend continues again. So again, um, if you're not trading the euro, the pound, or the dollar, um, you know the logic that I'm teaching you um, is going to be less reliable because these two currency pairs, the Australian dollar and the Kiwi, have their own unique behavior. So that's where we're at. Uh, move below 137.49 for the euro uh, pound. 
uh, repositioned money look for a move higher and one of the challenges with this is how much money do they have um, if they if they only have X amount of dollars to move in the Forex market this morning then they'll have to consolidate and gain some strength before they move up but they might have it in them we'll just find out um, I am still not accepting applications for new traders uh, at this time however um, if you you know regardless of whether you have uh, you know five minutes or five years of experience I'm offering a free consultation right here um, there's no charge and um, it'll take me a little while to meet up with you so what I'm doing is I'm giving uh, my book seize the high ground which is the logic it'll show you where the markets most vulnerable to you taking profit so you can actually just click on that and sign up and and what I'll do is I'll find out what your experience is and what you know and then I'll tell you um, with you know no real intention to sell you anything um, I'll tell you what you need to do in order to reach your goal I've been doing this for 10 years and I specialize uh, in you know I'm an expert in training people I mean being able to trade is one thing I can do that but being able to show someone else how to do it is a completely different skill so do take advantage of that if you're coming from uh, Google where you search me and saw my number one video you can get eight things right here also get on my email list um, I'm gonna put some more videos in here um, high probability trading is gonna go up next uh, right now you can watch master the Fibonacci tool which will show you all about new waves and it's gonna show you things that you don't know uh, but do register for that free consultation I'm I'm probably gonna do that just a little bit longer because I'm, I'm just I just want every once in a while I like to get out and meet people where I'm you know and, and learn about what they're seeing what they're doing and that sort of thing um, let's see uh, to our members watching uh, coming up in about 45 minutes so uh, at the New York Stock Exchange open we'll be getting together for our live trading room and uh, so I'll see you guys then cheers everyone